Good day, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> it's Eric Coffin, uh, HRA Advisories. I'm here on, on Tuesday, the 11th of May, 2021. Uh, this is a live webinar with uh, Robert Willis, Bob Willis, uh, who's CEO of Sun Summit Minerals. Uh, as my subscribers know, Sun Summit's a company I have followed for a while now. Uh, Bob and I are friends. Uh, Tuki Angus, the chairman of Sun Summit, and I are friends. Uh, and I, I know all the technical team. It's a company I've always been extremely comfortable with. Uh, I got a lot more interested and, in, and frankly, a lot more active buying the stock about a year ago when they when they picked up the project that is now their focus. Um, it's called the Buck Project. It's in North Central BC. It's just a little ways from the town of Houston, which is a resource town. It's it's largely a logging town, although there's, it's certainly got a lot of mining history too. Uh, the, one other thing that attracted me to this was based on the, the location and the infrastructure. It's the kind of project where if you can find a large resource, even at, you know, relatively, what I would think of as relatively low grades, you know, somewhere between a half, a gram and a gram, it's, it's probably still going to work in this location because the logistics are great. And those logistics have really helped the company when it comes to their expiration costs and their planning. Uh, they've been, they've been working very frugally. The company didn't need to raise a lot of money to get a lot of drilling done in the past year and they still have money left. But I mean, what we're here for today is really to focus on today's news. Uh, we'll get Bob to walk us through this, kind of explain how the whole view of this project has changed in the last few months and and, and where, where we see things going forward. <clears throat> for what it's worth, I was very happy with this morning's results. Uh, I thought they were very good. I, I frankly bought more stock in the market this morning based on those results. So, I mean, obviously I'm not, I'm not unhappy with them at all, but what I really like about this project is it just seems that as time has gone on, the potential just seems to get bigger and bigger. And when I first looked at the project with Bob, it looked like something that was sort of defined in the sense there was a bunch of old shallow drill holes and stuff, but really this whole thing's kind of opened up now. And, and I, I really don't know what the potential is anymore, other than that, I think it's significantly bigger than I thought a year ago. So with with that said, and like I said, I'm not going to spend much. I'm not going to spend any time with the corporate stuff. We mainly want to deal with today's news. There are there are Zoom videos between Bob and I if you want sort of more background on the company. But let's kind of deal with today and what things will look like going forward. So I'm just going to move this forward. That just shows you the location of it near Houston. Uh, fairly well known projects around it, and this is essentially the area they've been focusing on. The target area. Uh, do you want to speak to this, Bob? And you know, thanks for coming on today. Bob is is here to answer your questions. So uh, keep in mind as this as we're going through this. If you've got questions, you can type them in. Uh, there's a there's a box on the right side of your screen to allow for that. Because really, what Bob wants to be doing is answering your questions today. But let's walk through the results first and talk a little bit about it in, in general terms, and then we'll we'll see what questions come up. Okay, thanks, Eric. Uh, yeah, thanks very much. Glad to be here today. Um, yeah, we we are very uh, very pleased with our initial results, and um, just to on to to show where we're currently um, actively drilling, and um, we can see in the trench zone, horseshoe zone. But you know, I think equally important is that um, over the last year we have um, have done some IP, some mag, some soil uh, soil sampling grids in the area. Um, on this slide and have defined um, areas uh, to the south, to the west, to the north, in a variety of areas where there's, there's significant um, targets that we ha have not drilled yet um, and that should be part of our ongoing exploration program. The key takeaway from this slide is, a, is the scale, I think, and you can see the scale bar on the top, about two kilometers east-west and north-south, that's currently about a kilometer, but again, that's only where we have currently done some, some regional exploration in and around the drilling area. So I think with that, I'd like to um, just go to a plan map of our, of our drilling, uh, where we are drilling, and, um, and just talk about, I just want to talk a little bit about um, kind of how we cut to where we are in the last six months or so. So if we look at, what we call our discovery hole 12 and and um, 
Eric, maybe you can just kind of yep. put your, cur your cursor on that. So, so our discovery hole 12, to be honest, is not a is not a discovery hole per se. Um, we've known there was gold mineralization on the property since we acquired it, and it had been drilled in the 1980s and 1960s by others um, in various areas, a lot of shallow holes. Um, and there's there was obvious uh, um, the long runs of as Eric mentioned, like like lower grade mineralization from half a gram to a gram and a half. And that's one of the key components that kind of got us onto this project a couple of years ago. Um, now, having said that for hole 12, we said, okay, that's drilled due west. And why would we drill a hole due west? Well, if we look at where the trench zone word is on this on this slide we see all the white dots just just down below it and that's what um what you know we looked at from historical drill holes from 1980s most of these holes are 100 to 150 meters um, um on on angle and there was some interesting intercepts in those holes of you know medium to a little bit higher grade here and there but just of note all of those holes except for one, were drilled either due north to the top of the slide or due south to the bottom of the slide. So of note, our hole 12 is drilled 180 degrees to that, or 90 degrees to that, I should say. So we kind of recognize that between our horseshoe zone area that, um, that we had previously drilled last year and the trench zone, there was kind of a gap in there, about 300 meters or so. And, and we said, you know, there's no reason why the mineralization just stops abruptly necessarily um, between the horseshoe zone and the trench zone. So, so we drilled hole 12 and that was, we called it discovery because it was the first time on the property that we had or others, as far as our knowledge had discovered the kind of grades that we're talking about that, um, that, that were in hole 12. So those, those grades that, that we see in hole 12, were significant and we said okay let's why don't we swing the drill the other way hole 17 which we disclosed in today's news release and we said like hole 17 is is going to be drilled again in an area where there was historical drilling to the north the white dots you can see on this on this on this plan map um, to, to the north and angle to the northeast. Most of the historical holes, including ours from last year, were drilled to the northeast. We just felt that, you know, this total area is unconstrained and we would drill a hole where hole 17 is. And to us, hole 17 is one of the most significant holes on the property to date. And so again, that's just a bit of a history on why we drilled those two holes. And then subsequent to that, of course, um, in our news release today, we we can see the the uh, the drill traces of the uh, hole 18, which is drilled almost perpendicular to hole 17, and we can see the other holes, um, hole 19 and 22 and 20, are drilled at an angle to hole 12. So our thinking was that, you know, let's let's just drill at opposite angles and see um, if we can find a magnitude of this mineralization so, but the bottom line is at this point in time it is open in all areas um, east west north south and to depth we, we we have no idea of the magnitude of this so that's kind of just a summary of why why we did what we've done and i think when we get to our cross section we'll it'll be pretty obvious of what's to come yet well and just in a in kind of a big picture sense too bob i mean these are i mean they're great results but what what changed? I mean, like one one note that's on this map. I mean, you see this kind of reference to this area that's referred to as Mosaic Breccia. Uh, when you first picked this project up, you and the property vendor actually uh, sent me, you know, old reports on this, and I didn't really see any. I didn't see any reference of Breccia. Period. I, I certainly didn't see any reference of Mosaic Breccia, and that seems to be what's generating these long runs of good bulk kind of stuff near surface. I mean. This stuff is all basically wide open. I mean, it really, it's just not referenced in any of the old stuff that I believe that I could see anyway. Yeah, that's a good point, Eric. And I think part of that is, um, 
you know, again, we're not privy to previous operators uh, from the 1980s or, or 1960s, whatever, you know, what, you know, you know, the rationale for drilling where they did or, or whatever, but there was quite an array of geologists logging core, you know, 35, 40 years ago. And there, you know, we noticed there was some inconsistency in the drill logs to, to descriptions. And so I think really it was um, our initial drilling last year where we, where we actually just drilled in this area that we now call the mosaic brescia to, to see if what historically had been called there were some notes of breccia, but really not a lot of detail. So, so we drilled, I think it was hole six and seven and and nine to some extent last year um, through this mosaic breccia area, and it was just, it was just, uh, we just intercepted it um, and noted that it had not been discovered on the property before. And I and I, you know, that's a very good point that the, the hole seventeen, the the top part of hole seventeen is, you know, is 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 hosted in you know in in this breccia that's it's 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 kind of a a dacitic you know class in the breccia that has you know quartz carbonates with you know cemented hydrothermal breccias and so and it's it's over long long areas and we do not know the magnitude of that and i think of note on this on this slide as well um you know we, we have a couple of additional holes as you can see, all the green traces that we see on this plan map and on the cross sections are holes to come that we have currently have drilled in this program. So, yeah, the mosaic brescia is at or near surface, and it's uh, it's very good grade, and we just do not know the magnitude of that at this point in time. Okay, I'll move to the section here. Right. So, so again, I think I, I, you know, I kind of went through you know what we're seeing but i think hole 17 which we have have noted on this slide um is is in an area like i say it's 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 drilled more to the south from historical holes and um you know again it's open to the south to the east to the west and you know again we can see on the on the green drill traces in and around 17 there's there's two more that we have drilled that uh, we don't have results for yet um, so, so, so if we look at hole hole 19 and and hole 20, they're kind of like this is an east-west section, and and so hole 19 and 20 are kind of you know on top of each other, if you will. They're 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 from the same drill pad, but but one steeper than the other. And the whole idea of those holes was one to drill above hole 12 and one to drill below hole 12, and so we did that, and and then hole hole 20 as we can see was was drilled in an opposite direction now what is really important from this slide is that the high grade material that we've discovered had not been had not been seen on the property before to this magnitude and the historical drill holes that i talked about um, in the trench zone are more or less where the word trench zone is, just go to the left up on the surface there. They're very shallow holes. So our holes are drilled below those shallow holes. And again, if we look at the intercepts in, in hole 22, the intercepts in hole 20, these are down, you know, some of the higher grade material is down uh, a little bit deeper and we are ending, pretty much ending in mineralization in all holes. And I guess the other key thing is we look at the green drill traces on this cross section these are all holes that are pending and we can clearly see that we haven't you know we've taken a very aggressive approach here and uh, we haven't just stepped out a few meters from hole 12 or 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 whatever we've you know we we're going forward here and we can clearly see that on these holes pending here we you know we're looking forward to seeing those for sure yeah, and one thing I, I pointed this out to subscribers in a note I sent out earlier. When you look at this section, um, the way cross sections work, they're they're normally drawn so that you put anything within sort of a certain thickness. So it's not really a page thickness section. In the case of this one, it's 150 meters deep. So you have to think that you're looking 150 meters sort of into the screen when you're looking at this section. So it makes some of these current and proposed and pending holes look like they're very close together. They're actually 
quite a bit farther apart because they're sticking everything in a 150 meter thing into one one page section. So, um, right. and, and I think you notice when when we had the plan map up earlier, these holes are kind of drilled in in all different directions. I mean, and this is again, I mean, I I pointed out this morning to to my readers that one of the things I I actually like about Buck is is the complexity because in my experience. Uh, good deposits and large deposits tend to be complex. They tend to be a lot more complicated than the sort of the cartoons that you see in articles about them. And Buck certainly looks like it's probably going to live up to that. I mean, it, it it seems like you're hitting gold all over the place, but you've just got all these different cross-cutting features that seem to be gold-bearing. Uh, is anybody, is? I mean, I know you guys are keeping track of this. I mean, half facetious here, but, but uh, have you got any sense of, you know, I, I know you don't want to be pinned down to a model, and, and frankly, economic geologists, in my experience, don't care about models. They just care about whether the gold or the copper or the whatever is there. But it, the drilling you're doing now is this: is this giving you, you know, guidance in terms of in terms of where you go next, or is it just you're just going to keep pushing the boundaries out? Is that is that sort of the idea? Yeah, I think that's I think that's it. Uh, we're going to be pushing the boundaries out. I mean, I think. So far, I mean, we have on this, on on the geology at the Buck, there's a lot of similarities to the Blackwater deposit to the to the southeast uh, of, of where Buck is. Um, in, in kind of the, the macroscopic view of geology, of mineral assemblages, that kind of thing, styles of mineralization. But Buck is unique in its own sense in that, for example, in the trench zone, there's a lot more intrusive rocks. And these are in, are in the forms of dikes. And so, firstly, I think we can see dikes that are are post mineral. We see dikes that are sin mineral, meaning the dikes are mineralized as well as veins and veinlets around them. And we see some dikes that are post mineral. So there's like multi phases of in, of intrusion, if you will. And you know, I think also we're seeing mineralization that in and we talk about like veins and veinlets and the orientation that we see so far in our drilling in the trench zone, the veins and veinlets are going, I mean, they're going in every which direction. And so we definitely need to do some oriented, drill some oriented core here to, to get an idea of it. But having said that, the, the higher grade gold seems to be um, on the peripheries of some quartz, feldspar, porphyry dikes. And there's a broad zone of quartz, serostite alteration on the peripheries on the on the of these dikes and so you know one style of mineralization appears to be you know close to these dikes but we also see some disseminated gold as well and so we probably got about three different styles of mineralization in the trench zone so far and have no idea where the where the boundaries are in this thing we've 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 seen mineralization in every drill hole um, and quite frankly, we can't tell whether it's one gram or 10 grams. And so we really need to wait for the assay lab to give us a hand there. And when we look at some of our, our, our drilling, we say, well, you know, once we see assays, it will be easy to say, well, we, you know, drill additional holes in a certain area. But, but all of these drill holes that we see on this cross section in the trench zone um, are mineralized to some extent. And we just... It is so complex. It's such a big breccia system here that's uh, it's just kind of a well, it's just very difficult for us to 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 uh, talk about that. And as far well, so on the slide that shows you know, some of the mineralization, Bob, and that's I think it's something worth speaking to because it just seems like I mean I I, I can kind of see three of them that you've um, described, but uh, you think that number is going to get bigger? <laughs> As more comes back from the asset lab, I mean, are 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 you guys seeing more more style? I mean, I'm, I realize you don't have assets for them, but are you seeing more styles as you as you continue to drill here? Um, well, I think you know we've got so many styles right now, but we are seeing is like for example, it's you know we're it's a very good slide here of, of what we call our mosaic breccia. We can see the you know just sulfide cemented breccia and um, you know, uh, you know, pyrite and zinc, you know, sphalerite and 
and carbonate and quartz and you know and and i think it's you know you know again on the top you know we can see this in hole 23 um you know very you know very you know obvious gold hanging on the periphery of of this massive um uh, sulfide material that um you know so so we see gold in these veins and veinlets um, in the trench zone. We also see it in in the quartz, pyrite, sulfide veins and veinlets. We also see it in just straight quartz. We think there may be a late phase of gold only just in quartz in the trench zone. And then in the in the horseshoe zone, you know, we see, you know, all phases of the breaches contain gold and silver mineralization. And it's generally associated with what we call clotted, just big gobs of, of sulfide. Um, it's disseminated and it's breccia hosted um, with spalerite and pyrite. So, you, you know, the styles of mineralization are, I don't say they're well defined, but that's what we see so far. And right. I think it's a, it's a good thing to see the disseminations, to see veins, veinlets, and to see this, this uh, breccia material. It's, it's uh, yeah, I, I mean, again, it's we're learning as we go. And, um, yeah, it's it's just we, we you know we just have to get assays back to to really give us a, a hand on when we see see the drill core you know what what's carrying gold and what isn't and right now there's a lot of different styles that are carrying gold so well and one well I know you don't like I mean you know just for the audience Bob and I are among other things are personal friends so, I mean I know Bob fairly well and I know he I know he hates telegraphing but <laughs> that said. I did. I did promise to try to uh, to grind a few things out of you. Just in terms of the, I know there's a, you know, you only put out five holes today. There's a bunch of holes coming. It, is it fair to say that you're seeing mineralization and and maybe even multiple styles of mineralization in all the holes you drilled so far? And audience, take note. I'm not saying gold. I'm saying mineralization because you know they've got to wait for assays to get to get gold numbers that they 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 trust to get a report. I, I, yeah, I would say the answer is yes. We see mineralization in all holes. I would also say yes, that in many of the holes, we see mineralization that looks similar to, um, you know, other holes that have carried gold at different magnitudes, whether it's one gram or 10 grams, we don't know. Right. So we don't, one of the key things on the buck property so far is, and, and again, if, just looking at our news release today of the of the five holes, the, you know it's easy to see that in each hole there there are runs of you know multi multi meters of you know we'll, I guess we'll call it lower grade. It could be 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 grams gold over you know over significant widths and and so we're not really zeroing in on that, but that's a very very good hint that the entire rock package in this in this area that we're currently drilling is juiced up and uh and juiced up and altered and some especially the horseshoe zone some out some of the alteration is so intense is very hard to tell a rock type and there's a lot of faulting that not necessarily has been a lot of movement but the rock is very broken up so you know the rock's been very receptive there's a, there's there's a lot of tooths and you no know, ash tooths very porous rocks in the horseshoe zone and just soak up hydrothermal fluids so um, you know, we just don't know the limits of this thing right now, and and uh, it's just every time we we step out 100 meters here and 100 meters there, there's just more mineralization. So it's just an ongoing process. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, you know remind you to the audience um, if you want to ask questions, now's the time to be typing them in because uh, I'm going to start I'm going to start asking Bob questions from the audience. Uh, one. Uh, question here is: uh, Do any of the holes reported today hit squarely into the I, the IP anomaly? And those are those ones that were shown in cross section a couple months back. Um, or, you know, I guess do any of the later holes that are still to, rep to be reported? And I suppose at a more general level, I guess part of the question is: Is the IP a thing? Like, is it? I mean, obviously it is. I mean, chargeability is useful to have, but is is it something that that you guys think is meaningful in its own right, or is it just another guide to, to drill them? Yeah, that's a good question. I think the, 
the answer is that we don't really know the significance of the IP anomalies at this point. What we do know in the holes that have drilled either close to or through some of the smaller anomalies, it you know it's picked up you know intense sulfides. So and 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 that's what it, you know that's what it would presumably do. So now again the relationship of sulfides to you know could be pyrite only could be sphalerite could you know it, it's to 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 gold we don't know so you know it's i don't really have a definitive answer to, to that except that i i don't think that we're necessarily pointing a drill toward a the bullseye of an ip anomaly necessarily at this point in time because we, we just don't know the relationship with with gold and, and we need to kind of get a feel for that at this you know first i think so Right, so it's probably sulfides, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's gold. Um, I do. I got a question here from uh, Willem. Um, he's asking whether you see any similarities between this and uh, West Haven's discovery at Shovel Nose. Um, is that would you call them the same kind of category? I mean, I know you guys really haven't classified it, but any thoughts? Yeah, you know, I'd have to defer on that one and probably have one of our, have Chris Leslie in our group maybe answer that one. I mean, I think, you know, um, you know, Buck is like, a, you know, intermediate sulfidation type system. Um, and, I, and I don't really know the details of West Haven, so I have to defer on that one. My apologies. Right. Okay. I mean, it's, it's probably, I think it was closest. Um, I think it was close to any anything, uh, and it's been remarked on in the past that that's um, that's the uh, deposit that uh, at Blackwater. I mean, it, there are some obvious similarities there too, and that's one one thing. I guess I'll I will ask. I've got a couple more audience questions, but I'll just prefacing them. I mean, you look at a lot of these car photos. There's sphalerite all over the place. Um, I, I guess is sphalerite something you think really. Is going to be that meaningful economically, or is it essentially a pathfinder for you? Is it like it's something. Is it something that's useful for targeting? But that's really as far as you're going to go with it at this point. Yeah, I think in in a in a general answer, um, zinc is a is a great um, pathfinder footprint, if you will, um, for the type of of mineralization that we're exploring for at Buck. It also, to our knowledge, was a great pathfinder at the Blackwater. And these types of these types of systems, of mineralized systems, are you know zinc is a is a great pathfinder for that. We have you know, and we do have a slide here. I, I think that that shows at the Buck. You know, there's definitely a zinc footprint over where we're drilling. There's definitely a zinc and soil footprint. Um, to the north of our, of our, uh, you know, some of the areas in and around where we're drilling, and I think that we should, you know, we're putting together a very comprehensive exploration program for the entire Buck property, the 33,000 hectares, and we'll be, we're starting that very, very quickly here, and we're going to spend a few months looking at other areas in the Buck property that have very, very similar footprints and um by previous operators there's a lot of data that we have in our you know that 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 shows us from you know 20 30 40 years ago some of these footprints we're going to be also adding to that so and and, and we'll be talking about that in a couple of weeks we'll be having some some news about what we're doing why we're doing it and zeroing in on that but the other part of your question eric on the economic implications of of the of the zinc i mean it's you know it's not uncommon for us to see you know these hundred meter runs of 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 you know of, of the gold and silver that we talk about with you know half percent to a percent zinc i mean it's it's just you know so so having said that you know, you know i have to get back to the original question about styles of mineralization definitely in this mosaic breccia and also in in the horseshoe zone you know there's elevated zinc um you know, with the better grade gold in the Trent zone at this point in time, you know, there's another pulse or another style over there, which maybe doesn't have as much zinc in it, 
but it's got much higher goals. So, so again, this may be another phase, maybe another stage, we don't know, but I don't know economic implications of zinc at this point in time, but it is very significant. And I think we'll have some disclosure on that in a couple of weeks of what that may mean for us. Okay. Uh, and and when, Willem just had a follow-up in terms of uh, how far Blackwater is. Like, I think it's like, what, about 100 kilometers southeast, give or take? in essentially the same route. Yeah, I think 100, yeah, 160 or 170 uh, kilometers um, yeah, to the south southeast. Um, yeah, I think, you know, in general terms, you know, um, the age of the rocks um, at Blackwater are, are the same age as, you know, what we have at Buck. Um, you, you know, we can see on our, on the slide we're looking at here, the kind of the very pale, pale kind of greenish rocks in the center. Um, is is the same age rocks same 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 type of rocks as as black water and and we can see that you know there's various plutons and small intrusives in these rocks as well so so you know there's no doubt that that the engine the engine at the area that we're currently drilling a block the engine down there somewhere is most likely a porphyry of some sort where it is whether it's directly below east west north south we don't know but you know, we, we've seen we've seen some class in some of the breccia that is definitely you know you know porphyritic in nature. So you know it's there. You know that's not our target. That's not what we're going after here. But but the engine is big here, and we think there may be more than one engine. And you can see on the slide we're looking at here that you know the Irk target to the south that you know we're going to spend a lot of time there in the next couple months. So. Um, there's 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 more to the buck property than just our drilling at where we're where, where we're currently drilling. It's uh, this is a big project for us. Okay, and you had uh, next question was it was just sort of, sort of a general one about uh, how much uh, how much alteration mapping has has the team done, and and what does that tell you? I mean, I guess one thing to note about this property before Bob even answers is uh, buck like pretty much anything within 100 kilometers of it. Most areas, the outcrop exposure is not very good. So mapping mapping can be a challenge, although I think you do have a few areas on Buck where you've got some rocks sticking out of the ground, but not tons. Yeah, and and and, and that's true. Like there, there's very little outcrop and where there is outcrop, doesn't necessarily mean that's the best area to be mapping alteration. However, having said that, that we we have we have done a fairly intense alteration study, and and um, you know I can you know I don't have all the details of that at my fingertips at this point in time, but but we you know we do see where there's more kind of you know more silica sericitic you know type type alteration. There appears to be you know that's where there's more different styles of gold mineralization but that that's not necessarily the only the only, only style either we do see yeah yeah we do see some other alteration in, in in areas but that's just coming from drill holes and and again you know we're, we're just logging the current round of drilling as we speak so um, we'll have a better idea of the meaningfulness of the alteration going forward here but um, there's there's a number of different styles of alteration here that that we think will be meaningful just haven't got it pegged down yet Okay. Uh, next question was, uh, hi, Bob Air, great results from this morning. Do you have a sense on whether, you know, follow on drilling or do you think you're going to be focusing more on the high grade or more than bulk tonnage or, or is there even a preference? And another question I, I, I don't think you're really ready to answer yet, but you're working on it is any sense of what kind of scale you're thinking of in terms of drill programs in three months or six months or 12 months or whatever? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's that's a good question. I, you know, I think the um, as far as the scale, I mean, again, we obviously need to get um, you know more assays back and you know all that kind of thing. Uh, but I would say that you know last fall we drilled what four forty five hundred meters or I don't five thousand meters. I don't recall. And then and then another you know right now we're over seven thousand meters. So you know, I mean, I don't know. I can't see why. You know, maybe 10,000 meters, 15,000 meters. I mean, it's hard to say. I, but I think that you know we see enough at this point in time to be encouraged enough that we are in the planning stages of 
being more aggressive from what we where we currently are. The other, and that's a really good question about, you know, do we have a preference for the bulk tonnage or the higher grade and how we would target that? I guess the overall answer is, I believe that we'll target what we both, what we currently see, high grade or disseminated. But I also will say that in the trench zone, with the limited drilling that we've done, um, you, you know, yes, yes, we've drilled into the higher grade, higher grade material for sure. But I wouldn't dismiss that the trench zone area doesn't behold what could be called bulk tonnage mineralization as well, number one. And number two, I don't know that we really know the transition from the horseshoe zone to the trench zone. I mean, there's a north-south fault in there that's been postulated. And um, whether there's movement on it of any sort, we don't know. But I'm not so sure that there's kind of a mega, you know, kind of a mega difference between those two zones. So at the end of the day, we could find that, you know, bulk tonnage is everywhere here, which which would contain, as I said in my in my statement today, I guess we call sweeteners. So like hole 17, for example, I mean, it's got a, you know, not a bad, you know, higher grade zone in there that, that we haven't seen really in other bulk tonnage holes in the horseshoe zone. So there's new, you know, there's new thinking, there's new information coming. And I, you know, it just wouldn't surprise me at some point in time, everything just coalesces here, but you know, we just really need to drill, drill, drill. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, you so you don't even really know whether our, our horseshoe and trench two different sort of episodes in a, in a, because this is clearly something that was active for a long time and it's multi-episodic or whether they're just you're just kind of looking at the at the trunk and the tail of the elephant and you haven't seen the middle of it yet and that, actually that's one thing i wanted to touch on because I, I did mention in the update to subscribers but this is something you and i talked about earlier and you were pretty you know forceful on this point maybe you want to speak to it now is yeah, I mean, you've got this area where it's, there's just like I noted earlier, there's very little outcrop. So you're essentially prospecting with a drill uh, with a fair amount of success. But you don't really, in terms of the geometry of this thing, you really don't have any idea where the center is, or for that matter, do, do you even know if there is a center, the way the way that word would be meaningful? Yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. And, and I kind of touched on that a little bit, but probably wasn't too clear when, when I was talking about kind of why we drilled hole 12 where we did, and then we swung the drill, drilled 180 the other way. I mean, yes, we did those, but as far as the epicenter for either one of those holes, we have no idea. And so, you know, again, some of our current drilling, once we get assays back, may give us a hint. For example, hole 12, is it, I mean, we know, we already know it's open, you know, north, south, that depth east west but but which way we go maybe we go both ways north like we we don't know and and so i yeah we we don't maybe hole 12 just has tickled the you know the north end of something and maybe hole seven i mean hole 17 i mean it's obvious just step to the south i mean yeah i mean so uh, yeah i mean i i i have no idea where 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 we think we're going to start stepping out to find the limitations of this mineralization because we just can't we, when we haven't drilled any holes that don't have mineralization so it's difficult to really start thinking about that we just need to we just need to drill a little close closer spacing i think in the i think most likely in what we call the trench zone at this point in time just because the complexity of the dikes and the you know and these veins and veinlets and and they like if you look at these veins and veinlets in relation to the to the core i i mean it's they're going every which way from center they're they're low angle almost you know perpendicular to the core they're in anywhere in between so you know it's not kind of a you know it's not really a stock work stock work but it's kind of a stock worky appearance you know on the bigger picture because they're going every which way from center so we need to do some closer spaced oriented core especially in the trench but having said that you know look what hole 17 just showed us we probably got to do some orientation there as well so again to get back one of your to one of the uh, previous questions was we need you know we've got our team you know huddling and and really trying to get a handle on 
you know, ramping up our, our exploration efforts here. I mean, it's just, it just begs to get going on this thing hard. And that probably is a good follow on to that question. Uh, uh, there was a question from George here uh, coming down to the, asking you, how much money do you have and how far do you think that'll carry you before you have to go to market? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think we're we're funded for 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 our drilling that that has been completed to to date. Um, we have flow through money still, at least a million bucks uh, to to continue. Um, so as far as you know, we're we're funded okay at this point in time. When when we would raise some more money, I mean, our board has been discussing. A number of alternatives. Obviously, we've been approached by a number of groups to, to uh, you know, to to uh, raise some money. But you know, I think we, yeah, I think we kind of owe it to our shareholders here to kind of maybe get some more results out. And uh, you know, we feel pretty confident in kind of what we see and what we are seeing. And and anyway, I totally tiptoed around answering that question. Yeah, I, I do know that. Yeah, I do know that. You know the, the bank balance isn't you're, you're not out of money one thing i would note and I, I i sort of referenced it right at the start when i was talking about location and the logistics is um i can tell you bob's drilling costs are actually they're quite low i mean it, it's like a couple hundred bucks a meter all in which is which is really cheap um that's that's some of the cheapest drill costs i've seen and it's just it's because it's basically right outside of town there's no camp there's no helicopters none of that stuff so um yeah I, I think people should probably keep in mind that the the financing that funded this drill program was actually done like what the middle of last year, basically. Um, yeah, that, you know, he's Bob is still working on that same financing from from like last June, and he's still got a bunch of that left. So um, he's he's managed to make the dollar stretch pretty far. Um, and there's uh, I, there's a couple of questions that I I think are actually. I think are actually for me rather than you. So I'll try to. Um, one one of them is one of those. You know, is this a great bear style? Is this a great bear size style discovery? Like, who the hell knows? Um, it's not the same style. I mean, geologically, in terms of model, they're com they're completely different things. Um, Red Lake is mesothermal. This stuff is epithermal, essentially. Uh, is does it have that kind of scale? I have no idea. I mean, that's a big part of the message today. Is is really that they don't have any idea. They haven't found the edges of this thing. Uh, there's very little outcrop, so they're probably gonna find the edges with drilling more than anything else. And it's just gonna be a matter of drill and push out and drill and push out. Um, I think it's worth noting that the, the, you know, the slide that happens to be behind us now, you know, you can see there's several zinc and soil anomalies and for whatever reason, zinc seems to be a pathfinder. So these guys have definitely got their work cut out for them because a lot of that stuff, to my knowledge, has never been drilled, it's never even looked at really. It's just guys, I think they were looking for porphyries or whatever they were looking at back in the day, did these big soil grids and moved on and they never really got any follow-up exploration. Um, and I think this question could be for <laughs> could be for both of us, I'm not sure. Um, but I, I think it's partially for me because it's a market question you can't answer. So I'll, I'll answer it and then you can toss in what you want. Uh, basically what, what gets you the most excited about today's results and do you think the market underestimates potential scale? I, again, I think the market probably does underestimate potential scale, but we don't really know what the scale is. So I can't really say it's underestimating it by X. I, I do think it's worth reiterating again. I pointed this out to, to readers when I described hole 17. You know, keep in mind that this day and age, something, these kind of logistics and assuming, and, and keep in mind, I'm just, I'm, I'm pulling this number out of my behind, but just assume there's a really large, resource here in terms of tonnage so that you're you're open pitting and you're mining at a you know fairly high rate 15 20 000 tons a day something like that you know this day and age when you're mining at those rates with this kind of logistics your cost per ton to move rock is quite low i mean it, it's several bucks a ton so uh, i believe these guys are using using and this is just for drill intercept calculation using a, a cutoff of 0.15 but i'd say that that or something even below it's probably realistic the current gold prices for a large mining scenario. If you look at hole 17, yeah, there's 186 meter intercept, but on top of that, going from bedrock surface to 55 meters, 
there's that's almost half a gram and then there's like 11 meters in between that did make cutoff but in a at a practical level on a mining scenario you would probably be mining all of that so that's that's a 250 meter intercept um, if you can drill a bunch of 250 meter intercepts no pressure there bob but if you can if you can drill a bunch of those those kind of intercepts at grades around a gram and one thing i'll note too is that bob and i you know when i when i sent out stuff this morning to readers and in the news release Every all the numbers we're discussing are gold only. Silver's not that big a deal here, really, but but it does make a difference. Like a lot of these grades would be up 10% if you included the silver, just for simplicity's sake, we're just talking gold. But if you're drilling 250 meters near a gram and, and you can pull together a bunch of holes with those kind of intercepts, you add ounces very fast. Like the ounces pile on quickly. And that's the reason, that's part of the reason why Bob and his team have never really, even though they hit full 12 not got everybody excited they've never stepped back from you know the bulk tonnage they didn't just say okay let's just try to drill hybrid because they realize they realize the kind of ounces you can have with the bulk tonnage stuff even though the hybrid's sexier if you will i don't know if you want to touch on that yeah. or just get uh, trouble and you want to stay the hell away from it <laughs> <laughs> well yeah i mean i think um you know, you know, seeing our 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 drill results from the first five holes, yeah. I mean, it's you know now it's you know it, it it's pretty easy for us to say you know in and around 17, well, hole 17, yeah. I mean, you know, that's a smoke and good hole, and obviously we're going to be you know you know looking around there. But of course, we didn't have that knowledge you know when we drilled the hole, and I think it's the same in the trench zone. I mean, yeah, we had hole 12, but. You know, we spun these drills like drilling 90 degrees the whole 12 or 45 degrees. You know, we didn't kind of just sort of try twinning this thing and for a bunch of, you know, so, so, you know, and again, I just want to kind of reiterate that, you know, I, you know, I wouldn't write off the trench zone to be just high grade material um, right. that has a underground mining sense or a whatever sense. I mean, extraction methods at this point in time are, you know we can't get to that arena yet i mean we we gotta so but as far as building ounces i mean yeah you can build a lot of ounces from 150 meters of a gram you can also build a lot of ounces from like you know a lot like that's uh 150 meters at a gram 150 gram meters well you know i think today we had a four meter of uh 32 grams well that's about 120 gram meters so you, you know it's all in the it's all in the ounces of gold and and uh you know in in a in a certain area so i'm not doesn't have to all be just you know the one gram or stuff for a gram and a half or i think we've got i think again that would this could this could coalesce and we could have a a mishmash of of what we currently term bulk tonnage and the higher grade material because so i think there's i think it'll i think this trench zone could surprise us a little bit so anyway let's wait for the assays and see okay i got a couple of I'm going to run through a couple of fairly quick technical questions. Here. I'm going to I'm going to kind of mush a couple of them together. Um, any thoughts on doing, uh, or whether you think it would be useful to do MT geophysics? And Paul asked about the, if you got a sense of what the average overburden thickness is here. Yeah, um, the overburden, like in in the trench zone itself and the horseshoe zone, is is not much. It's sort of maybe five to ten meters you know in certain areas some of it's just rubble um right. up to the north area and our targets to the north buck north and up in that area the overburden tends to be a little deeper up there um where we did put a couple holes in last year and that can be up to like you know 60 70 meters maybe even deeper than that in some areas up to the north but where we're currently drilling yeah the overburden is not is not deep at all it, it's just but having said that, I mean, there's very little outcrop, but it's only covered by a few meters. Right. Okay. And MT is not, MT isn't, MT geophysics isn't something that, that's on the table right now, as far as you know. I haven't heard that from our team, but I'll certainly, uh, I'll certainly ask. Okay. Um, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask this one question. I know this isn't. I gotta. I'm gonna leave this and let you decide whether you want to really go into it because I know this is. This is a tricky subject and there's a lot of confusion about it. And I, I've tried to kind of walk people through this in, in the newsletter, 
Um, metallic screens got done on some of the some of the VG stuff from the last from the last phase from home, some of the stuff from Hold 12. A couple of those had big upgrades. And basically someone's asking, like, why why is it the metallic screen shows the true grade? And before you even go there, Bob, I'm gonna kind of have my own answer for that. Um, I, I believe there's a protocol in place to do metallic screens. So one thing that's important to note is that you have to understand this about assays. All assays, including metallic screens, are essentially a statistical artifact. And what that means is you're sampling a very small population from a much larger mass. And that goes for metallic screens as well. So obviously we're hoping that the much higher grade in the one sample from whole 12 is the true grade, but the true grade I suspect is somewhere between. And um, I've noted in some of the alerts that I've sent out that the, one of the members of Bob's team is actually a specialist at this stuff. This is his area. And I, I think at some point he'll probably do the math, literally he'll do the stats and see whether uh, it makes enough difference to, to, to really even be reporting the metallic screen stuff. But right now it's being done more for statistical purposes than anything else. And there's, there's 43 one-on-one issues I won't bore everybody with it. It gets complicated. You can't just switch back and forth through an asset type. So the answer is, yeah, that, that number was great to get, but you know, is that the true number? The true number is probably in the middle somewhere, honestly, that's just how assaying works. You can assay the same sample five times and you'll get five, you will get five different numbers. That's just how assaying works. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you, yeah, I think you answered that quite well. I mean, it, it's, yeah, it, it, you know, as you said, it's all in the theory of sample size for when you have coarse gold. And 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 so the, the, the screen mets are generally done when you either see or suspect visible gold. So, and if you can see gold, I guess that's considered coarse gold. So if you really, you know, think about, um, you know, a small sample size, as you mentioned, for, for a normal fire assay, um, you know, let's just... For comparison, say it's a it's a coffee cup full, and so you mix it on the lab, mixes it all up, takes a scoop out of it, assays it, and whatever little particles of gold or big particles of gold happen to get into the to the scoop, that's what gets assayed. Now, now on a screen mat, let's take like a five gallon pail full of the same sample, and that's just a much larger sample, and you mix it all up, and and now you're going to take a sample out of a much larger sample. And so the chances, I guess, of getting a more representative, the theory is a more representative assay, um, you know, from a larger sample may, may be a truer value. But, you know, who's to say that, that these little particles of gold that are considered coarse, that you even got that or didn't get it in, in the larger sample. So it's a little bit of a, I think it's, you know, it's a, yeah, we're not really keen on continuing that process. I don't really think so far it's, our stats are showing it's all that meaningful. Um, you know, the, and, and I think what's, you know, it, it's kind of deviating from that a little bit, the, that, that question. But, you know, we need to be thinking about in this trench zone area, like the number of holes that we've seen visible gold in the drill core. The, 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 this drill core is like HQ core. So what's that about? I don't know, seven centimeters or eight centimeters in diameter. And then 200 meters away, you got another hole, another 100 meters over here, another hole and another hole. So the chances, you know, if we think about this, the chances of pointing a drill with that small size of core and 300 meters or 200 meters below the surface, thinking you're going to drill through a piece of visible gold, the chances are zero, kind of. So when we see when we see the amount of VG that we have seen, and again, that's not the end all be all, but it tells us there's that style of gold is in a much big area here. So it's not it's not the fact that we you know that yeah the VG is nice, it's flashy, but you know what? The bigger picture here is that we see this stuff over a big area. So I wouldn't get too concerned on this screen met thing. That's not really going to help us in the big picture. It's just it's just seeing this VG over such a big area and it's not limited. It's really, really important. Okay. And I'm just, I'm just going to ask a, just a couple of just quick questions and they're actually more stock than rock questions. Do you, do you have any sense off the top of your head what's come in in terms of warrants? I mean, one of the 
one of the viewers is asking because I think I think the website or maybe it's a lot of financial show about I don't know 15 million warrants or something. Do, do you have any sense of what's come in? I mean, I got a feeling you'll see more after today, but they are just kind of dribbling yeah. and grabbing. In. Yeah, yeah, they've been dribbling in over the last you know month or so or six weeks, and um, I think we were up around 17 million warrants here at the beginning of the year. I think we're down around 13 million now. So, yeah, you know, we've had you know a few hundred thousand dollars come into the treasury um, on a continual basis, and that's that's continuing as we speak. So, um, yeah, as far as the additional warrants, uh, they're out there, and um, I think the bulk of the warrants are in that sort of 20 to 25 cent range. And then there's not the bulk, maybe half of them in that range. And the rest are from our financing last year in August, and they're at 34 cents. And right. so, um, yeah, all the all the warrants we have are in the money right now. Okay. And the, and, and the last question, I'm, and I'm only asking this because it, because it amused me. Um, Ryan asked about super flow through. Um, I know how much you love flow through after last year's placement. Um, if I can answer on Bob's behalf, my answer would be, I'm totally fine with super flow through if it's just me in the placement, but other than that, not so much. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, are, are we referring to like charity flow? Is that what we're talking about? No, this is like the BC. And I think it's I think it's actually based on bug areas and stuff like that. There are areas in BC yeah. where you have super flow through where the the write off isn't actually a hundred percent. It's like a hundred and sixty or something insane like that. I mean, you're essentially yeah. handing the yeah. stock over for yeah. I'm, I'm not sure what the specifics of that are though, but I, I know how I know how you reacted to the last one. So I don't think anybody should hold their breath waiting for waiting for a super flow through placement. No, I mean I yeah I, I mean it was just a bad experience in, in my career to be honest um uh, you know i had never done a, a flow through of any sort before so it was kind of my first my first foray into that arena so it wasn't i, I don't say it was overly pleasant but that's just the way it works so yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't write off that 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 we wouldn't do like a charity flow of some sort in the future here but uh um yeah i, I don't know yeah I, I wasn't totally jacked about the lot i mean Having it done in the places were great, absolutely. I'm just talking about the market side of things wasn't overly pleasant. Okay, I think. I mean, we're getting we're getting on to an hour here, so I think that's probably as far as we should go. Um, I just wanted to thank you for coming on with short notice, Bob. Uh, you know, again, a great set of results. I mean, the market seems to be happy with them, which is saying something because today wasn't exactly a uh, great day across most markets. <laughs> I, I found it was ironic that you put the news release out and immediately gold got dumped thirty dollars. But that's you know, guys that have been around as long as Bob and I. You just kind of you you learn to develop a taste for irony, or or you just become a masochist. Either one works, I guess, if you're in the exploration business. But uh, thanks for coming by, Bob. I'm sure as we get more results from this round, and I know you're you're expecting me to put out news on this for the next couple of months, probably. Uh, we'll uh, we'll be on again and, and talking about and getting an update and thank you uh, to everybody in the audience that, that made time today to come on and, and view this uh, we i will have a recording made so at, at some point i'll probably put it up on my youtube channel or someplace where people that didn't have a chance today can can view it later but uh, thank you bob thank you audience uh see you guys later congratulations on a good set of holes bob i'll talk to you later thanks Thanks very much, Eric. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone.